What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And in this next video, what we gotta do is find the midpoint of each of these line segments over here. So notice these are the coordinates of the endpoints of the line segments. Now, just in general, how do we find the midpoint between two points? Well, if we have a point x1, y1, and if we have a point x2, y2, what we do is we find the midpoint between the x values, so we would add them up and then divide it by two. And then the y value, same thing, we would add up, divide by two. All right, so that's the process we're gonna be following for all of these. So starting with a, we have negative five, negative five, negative two, negative nine. Now, sometimes if you get points like this, it can help in potentially drawing a diagram just a rough one, so negative five and negative five, that's gonna be like over here, right? An x value of negative five, a y value of negative five. And then negative two and negative nine would be like over here. So that is the line segment right there. And the reason why a rough diagram like this sometimes helps is because then the answer you get, it should be in this particular area over here. So let's see what we get. We'll have negative five plus negative two, that's gonna be divided by two. And then the y values will have negative five plus negative nine, that's gonna be divided by two. If you're working with negatives, I actually suggest putting everything in brackets so you don't miss any signs because the signs are important. So notice that here, we'll have negative five plus negative two, which is like negative five minus two, right? The plus and the minus turn into a negative. So negative five minus two would give us negative seven, and that would be over two. And then we'll have negative five plus negative nine, that would be like negative five minus nine, which would give us negative 14. And then uh, negative 14 over two would give us uh, negative seven. So that ends up being the midpoint. Notice negative seven over two is negative 3.5, which is between negative five and negative two. And then negative seven, notice that that's in between negative five and negative nine. So the midpoint would be right there. That is the coordinates of the midpoint. All right, so that's the answer for part A. Now part B, notice that these coordinates, they're given in decimals. Notice that these coordinates, they could be given in different kind of formats, right? I wanted to give a bunch of different formats here. So with, um, with this, what we would do is 4.2 plus 1.4, and we're gonna divide it by two. And then we'll have negative 2.1, let's put that in brackets, plus 1.3, that's gonna be divided by two, like that. So this would end up being what? We'll have 5.6 over two, and then negative 2.1 plus 1.3, that would give us what? Negative 0.8, and that's gonna be over two. And then because this was in decimals, usually the final answer should be in decimals as well. It should be in the same format that the original was in. So 5.6 over two, that would give us 2.8, and then negative 0.8 divided by two would give us negative 0.4. Right, so that there ends up being the answer for part B. That is the midpoint of the line segment that has those endpoints right there. Now with part C and part D, the algebra is gonna be a little bit more complex. I'm gonna give myself some room here. So, same thing, it's just now what's gonna happen is we're dealing with fractions, but same process applies, but I'll show you how I deal with fractions when I see something like this. So first I write everything out as usual. So I'll have four over three plus negative five, and then all of that is divided by two. And then we add up the y values, so five over two um, plus negative three over seven, that's gonna be divided by two. The reason why it's a little bit more complex is because notice that we have fractions within 
fractions. And so when I get something like this, what I like to do is I actually like to work with both of these on the side just to not have too much going on because then the chances of making a mistake go up. And then even from here, even this, what I do is I first work with the numerator first. So I'll have four over three. Now plus and minus, that ends up just being a minus. And then we have five like that. So I end up just working with the numerator first and then I get something there and then I'll divide it by two. So four over three minus five, this is like five over one. And then to subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. So a common denominator between three and one is three. So I'll multiply this by three, multiply this by three. So we'll have four over three minus 15 over three, which would give us negative 11 over three. Right? That's what this bracket is. That's what the numerator is right there. And so from there, what I can do is bring that negative 11 over 3 here. And now we'll have negative 11 over 3 divided by 2. Now dividing by 2, that's like dividing by 2 over 1. Right? So another way to write this, if you prefer, you could say negative 11 over 3 divided by 2 over 1. Both of these are the exact same thing. What happens when we divide by a fraction? We've got to flip the fraction and multiply it by 1 over 2, like that. And then from here, we just multiply the numerators. Negative 11 times 1 is negative 11. And then 3 times 2 gives us 6. Right? So this whole part right there, that expression, simplifies to negative 11 over six. So again, if you get something like this, first write out the general statement like that, but then work with each part separately so you're not making, or your chances of making a mistake are a lot lower. So that is the x value of the midpoint. It's going to be negative 11 over six. Now, what about the y value? So same thing. I'm going to just work with this numerator portion. So we'll have five over two plus negative three over seven, which is like minus three over seven. Now from here, what's the common denominator between these? 14, right? We can multiply this by seven. So we multiply the top by seven, multiply this by two, multiply that by two. So we would end up with 35 over 14 minus six over 14, like that. And then what is 35 minus six? That gives us 29. So that's going to be 29 over 14, but remember, that's just the numerator portion, right? Just the numerator portion. So now what we got to do is we got to take the 29 over the 14 and then divide it by this 2, which is like dividing it by 2 over 1, which is like 29 over 14 times 1 over 2. 29 times 1 is 29. 14 times 2 is 28. And then notice that this there does not simplify any further. So this ends up being 29 over 8, like that. Right? So that ends up being the midpoint for part C. So just be careful with the fractions. Now moving on to part D. Same thing. Let's write out the general statement first. So we know the direction we're heading in. So we're 1 over 2 plus negative six over five, and that's gonna be divided by two, like that. And then we're gonna add up the y value, so we'll have negative three over five um, plus three over four. And that's gonna be divided by two, like that. So again, let's work with the numerator first. So plus minus, that ends up being a minus, 6 over 5. If you kind of want to incorporate even the 2 over here, what you can do is you can actually take this and write it as this numerator, which is in this bracket, divided by 2, which is like multiplying it by 1 over 2, like that. It's just you got to remember before multiplying, you got to simplify this bracket first. Remember bed mass brackets come before multiplication. 
So if you want to do it all in kind of one shot, you can write it out like this. Right? That's another way that you may prefer. Now from here, common denominator between 2 and 5 would be 10. So I multiply this by 5, multiply this by 5, multiply this by 2, multiply that by 2. So we would have 5 over 10 minus 12 over 5 multiplied by 1 over 2. Or sorry, 12 over 10, my bad. Like that. Then what's 5 minus 12? That is negative 7. That's going to be over 10 multiplied by 1 over 2. And then from here, we can multiply the numerators. Negative 7 times 1 is negative 7. And then 10 times 2 gives us 20. Right, so this here simplifies to negative 7 over 20. And then let's do the same thing for this uh, y portion. So let's do the same method. So we'll do it all in one shot. Negative 3 over 5 plus 3 over 4. Maybe leave some space here so when you're multiplying to get that common denominator, there's not too much written out or it's not too squished up. And then we're dividing by 2, so that's like multiplying by 1 over 2, like that. Common denominator between 5 and 4 is 20, so multiply this by 4, this by 4, this by 5, this by 5. And we'd have negative 12 over 20 plus 15 over 20 multiplied by 1 over 2. Work with the bracket first. So negative 12 plus 15 gives us 3 over 20 multiplied by 1 over 2. And this would end up being 3 over um, 40. Right? Let me just double check here. Yeah, it seems right to me. All right, 3 over 40. So that ends up being the midpoint, the y value of the midpoint. So that there ends up being the final answer for part 